What's going on, nation, and welcome to another episode of my Versus series. Last time we compared the sumo deadlift versus the conventional deadlift, and if you missed it, I'll put a link to that video down in the info section below so you guys can check it out. And now after reading all of your comments, next up is the barbell bench press versus the dumbbell bench press to finally answer the question of which exercise builds more muscle. Now, when it comes to building a massive full chest, I highly doubt any of you care what exercise you need to do or how much weight you need to lift just as long as it works. For men, our chest is the first thing we want to have go through the door when we enter a room and a massive chest displays power and confidence. Yes, genetics will play a role in the shape of your chest, but we can always work on enhancing the size of your pecs by training them properly. But before we begin, let's talk about the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor. Now the pectoralis major is the large fan-shaped muscle covering the anterior rib cage, so right through here. This muscle makes up the entire visible portion of your chest and is actually split into two parts, the clavicular head and the sternal head. Now the clavicular head is the smaller upper portion of the pec major, which is right here, okay? And it originates on the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle, so right through here, and it inserts on the lateral lip of the bicipital groove of the humerus and anterior lip of the deltoid tuberosity, which is a really long way of saying right over here. Now the sternal head, which is the larger lower portion of the pec major, which is right through here, originates on the lateral aspects of the manubrium, so right through here, and the body of the sternum, the upper six costal cartilages, and the aponeurosis of external abdominal oblique, which is another fancy way of saying right through here. The action of the pectoralis major as a whole, so both heads working together, is to adduct the arm, so to adduct the arm, and to bring it medially across the chest. So think of a chest fly. This is medially across the chest as well as to medially rotate the arm, which is this way, and the clavicular head flexes the arm, which is coming up, and the sternal head extends it, and the extension of the arm by the sternal head can only occur if the arm is flexed. Now, the pectoralis minor is a small triangular muscle which lies beneath the pectoralis major. It originates from the anterior surface of the three to five ribs and inserts on the core cord process of the scapula, which is where the short head of the bicep brachii originates, which we talked about in the dumbbell bicep curl versus dumbbell hammer curl video. The function of the pectoralis minor is the, is the depression and downward rotation of the scapula, which is another way to say roll your shoulders back and retract your scapula. All bench press variations, which includes the dumbbell bench press and the barbell bench press, work the pec major. This is because when you retract your shoulder blades, the pectoralis major is stretched, and as you move your arms closer together to the center, the muscle shortens. And this is why, time and time again, I always tell you guys when doing chest exercises to retract your shoulder blades, because you're working your muscle through the stretched position, which is where you're gonna get the most muscle breakdown. Also, even though you may not feel them, stabilizers in the area are working just as hard as the pectoralis major. These stabilizers are your deltoids, rotator cuffs, spinal erectors, and transverse abdominis, and they are activated to help maintain body stability and balance throughout the movement. Now that we have a better understanding of the pec major and pec minor, let's talk about the barbell bench press and how to get properly set up for the exercise. So when performing this exercise, what you want to do is position yourself so your feet are flat on the ground and your knees are pushed out. And then as you get underneath the bar, what you're going to want to do is slide forward, keep your shoulder blades retracted, slide under the bar just like this, and then drop your hips so that your butt stays glued to the bench the entire time. You have an arch in your back and you're keeping your core tight. From here, you're gonna grab probably just outside of shoulder width apart on the bench. And then as you perform the movement, you're gonna bring the barbell down all the way to your sternum or the bottom of your chest. Then as you press the bar up, you're gonna push through your arms and push through your feet while flexing your glutes and your core. So it's more than just your arms going up and down. Push through your feet, push through your arms, and flex your core. Now with all of that being said, why is there so much setup time for the barbell bench press? It is because the sole focus of this movement is to lift as much weight as you can. 
Of course, you will also stimulate your chest for muscle growth, but there are some limiting factors here that you need to be aware of. The first one is range of motion. When pressing a barbell, your hands are locked in a single position on the bar. Because they're locked in place, you're not able to move your arms throughout their full range of motion, which will limit how far you can extend your arms during the lift. So if you're holding the bar like this, and you go straight, you can't exactly bring them in close together. And you guys can see more muscle activation in my chest just from going from here to here. Next is maintaining muscular tension. Believe it or not, hand placement plays a huge role in the development of your chest during a barbell bench press. If you grab the barbell too wide, you will distribute muscular tension to other muscle groups outside the chest. It should be very obvious that in order to maximize your results, you want to keep as much muscular tension on your pecs as possible during the movement. So of course I'm talking about a wide grip bench press. Grabbing out here and going like this, you guys can see there's not really much of a shortening of the chest. I stretch it out, but there's not really a shortening as opposed to going all the way in. The last limiting factor is the development of muscle imbalances. Because you are pressing a single bar, it is possible for your dominant side to take over the movement, resulting in one side working harder than the other. Up next is the dumbbell bench press, which has the same form set up as the barbell bench press. You're going to have your feet flat on the ground, you're going to push your knees out, and as you roll back, you're going to retract your scapula, keep your core tight, and as your glutes hit the bench, keep a slight arch in your back. So, let's get into position. Once into position, you're going to lower the dumbbells down as far as you can, tucking your elbows in slightly, and then from here, you're going to push through your arms while also pushing through your feet for maximum drive to return the dumbbells back to the top portion of the movement. So what's the difference between these two exercises? Well, let's take a look at the range of motion first. Because there's no barbell keeping your hands fixed in one position, you will not only be able to extend your arms more at the top of the movement, but you will be able to lower the dumbbells a bit more as well. This is because normally at the bottom of the movement for the barbell bench press, the barbell would stop when it touches your chest. With dumbbells, you are limited only by your flexibility. And because you are increasing your range of motion, you are allowing more muscle fiber activation, thus increasing the muscular benefit from the movement. When it comes to muscular tension, since the dumbbell press allows for a greater range of motion, you have more control over the motion of your arms and can keep your movement more in front of your body. As mentioned before, a wide grip on the barbell bench press takes tension off the pecs and applies it to the surrounding outside muscles. But because you have more control with the dumbbells, this will allow you to keep more concentrated tension on your chest for a longer period of time. And what I mean by that is, obviously we talked about grabbing wide and getting not enough stretch and not enough shortening of the muscle. With dumbbells, you can tuck your elbows in, get that full range of motion and get that nice tight stretch and then go right through the motion and keep the dumbbells over your chest and shorten it to activate as much muscle fiber as possible. We also talked about muscle imbalances with the barbell bench press because it's possible for your dominant side to take over during the movement. However, with the dumbbell press, each arm moves independently to lift the weight, and this allows each side to do equal work and develop equally as well. Now to finally answer the question as to which exercise builds more muscle, and my choice would be the dumbbell bench press. When compared to the barbell bench press, it is very clear that you are able to train in a greater range of motion and keep constant tension on your chest muscles. I would also like to note that there is no room for cheating with the dumbbell press. When using a barbell, you can easily bounce the bar off your chest at the bottom of the movement, which might give you a few more reps, but in terms of building muscle, is useless as you're bouncing the weight to create the movement, not engaging your chest to create the movement. There are a few other benefits to the dumbbell press as well. For example, the only reason why the setup process is so complicated for the barbell bench press, and by this I mean I'm talking about arching your back and driving through your feet, is because you're positioning your body to be able to lift as much weight as possible. But if the goal is purely muscle growth, these steps don't matter and you can actually lift your feet off the ground to enhance muscle fiber recruitment during the dumbbell press. This is because the slight change produces a joint stress transfer in a positive way, and what that means is that because you have removed all the stability that comes from keeping your feet planted on the ground, 
you're transferring more of the workload to your chest and the surrounding stabilizers. Now what this also means is that you might have to use lighter weights to perform the movement, but if you've been paying attention, you would know that the weight doesn't matter when building muscle. The biggest thing, aside from muscle stimulation, that you need to take away from this video is that if you are bodybuilding, you are trying to train the muscle and not the movement. What I mean by this is that you are not power lifting. So the goal isn't to contort your body to find the best position to lift the most amount of weight possible. Your goal is to approach the exercise with the mindset of how can I stimulate as much of my chest muscles as possible on every single repetition. This is about size gains, not hitting one rep PRs. So if you're watching this video and you truly care about building a muscular physique, once you're able to kick your ego to the curb, the question of how much you lift will become irrelevant as everyone will be too busy admiring your bulging chesticles to remember to ask. So when you hit your next chest workout, try four to five sets of 10 to 12 reps of the dumbbell bench press as your first exercise and only take a 30 to 60 second rest period between sets and maybe even try a few sets with your feet up in the air. Then come back here and let me know if you felt more muscle engagement. Now before you guys go, I have two tips I want to share with you for the dumbbell bench press to help you maximize your results and it's the self spot and the self lift off. And we're going to talk about the self lift off first and this is actually a technique that I've been teaching since my first chest video on YouTube back in 2009. What this technique allows you to do is to have more energy to put into all your repetitions before you even start your set. And what I mean by that is most people when they do a dumbbell bench press, they roll back and the dumbbells are right here and they have to fidget a lot to get themselves in the right position to retract your scapula and then press the dumbbells up, get into position again and then start the movement. If you do this trick and you practice it properly, you have a much easier time getting into position with heavier weight and you have more energy to do more reps. But I will warn you, this trick, I'm going to make it look super easy, but I want you to try it with lightweight first. So I'm going to grab these 120 pound dumbbells real quick, just to show you guys how easy it is to do it, even with heavy weights. So what you're going to do is you're going to rest the dumbbells almost pretty much on your knee, so on the top of your thigh. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lean forward and you're going to throw yourself backwards while pushing off your toes and extending your arms so the weights go in the air and you're going to follow the weights until they go on top of your body. I'll show you what I mean. So let's get started. Just like that. And now once I'm in this position, all I have to do to retract my shoulder blades is slide backwards. Just like that. And now I'm in position to start doing repetitions. And then as soon as you're done doing your set, you can either drop the dumbbells down by your side or you can get down the same way you got up and go like this, which I think looks cool. <laughs> now the other tip is pretty self-explanatory and that's the self spot. Now when we're lifting in the gym, obviously if we don't have a spotter, we're doing the barbell bench press, it can get pretty scary when you're getting to that last repetition where you think there might be a 50-50 chance that you'll be able to actually do it. Well, when you're doing a dumbbell bench press, if you get to that last repetition and nobody's around to spot you and you really want to go for it, you can. And if you get stuck, all you have to do is drop the dumbbells down by your side and you're safe. I hope you all learned a lot today and remember to check out the other videos in my Versus series. I'll put a link down in the info section below to those. Also, if you're looking for a full muscle and strength building program, check out my 12 week transformation challenge. I'll put a link to that below as well. And remember guys, as always, more good stuff coming soon. See ya.